so what happened was when I was about 15 or 16, a group of friends and I uh, broke into a storm drain. And uh, we thought it would be really funny to get tiki torches and walk about uh, 45 minutes into the storm drain, which went progressively underground for about two kilometers. Um, and then all of a sudden we became conscious of the fact that we were walking in the storm drain and that it was getting colder and wetter. And all of a sudden one of us pointed out, hey, look up and you'll see a bunch. Uh, and we all looked up and we saw all these shaking raindrops like come from the condensation around the uh, thing. And uh, then all of a sudden we heard a little girl scream. This is six people at the same time. And all the drops started running on us. So it was, I mean, it was about an hour uh, into it. So there was no real reason why there would be a little girl screaming in the middle of a storm drain that's under, that far deep underground. But needless to say, we spent about two hours uh, running back, very, very scared, uh, through the other direction. Okay, so around. when I was really small, probably eight years old, I was at my cousin's house, and uh, he lives at Bloor and Jeffrin. And basically, we were on his third floor. The house had three floors plus a basement. Okay. And we were in the guest room. So we were listening to the radio plugged in when my aunt said, come downstairs for dinner. So we unplugged the radio and we went downstairs. Um, about an hour later, we went back upstairs to find the radio playing. So we looked to see if it was plugged in and it wasn't. And then we flipped it around to see if there was batteries in it and there wasn't. So we ran downstairs screaming. And when my aunt went upstairs to look, the radio was off and they didn't believe us. But it was a ghost, definitely. Yeah. Okay. I once shared a hotel in London with a friend and in the middle of the night, for no reason, he jumped out the window and almost died. And a few days later, and he couldn't explain what happened. He had no idea what had happened. He could only conclude that he walked in his sleep. And a few days later, someone, an antique dealer came and went into that same room and went immediately downstairs to the desk clerk and said, I'm not staying there. It's haunted. Okay, so I used to live uh, in an apartment temporarily that was basically, it was being torn down or they were going to be renovating it. And I had no furniture and it was a sort of a 1910, 1920s old school apartment. And and uh, one night I was, uh, I came home from work and I was uh, sort of lazing about, sort of reading a book, relaxing. I'd had one beer and I was just, I wasn't drifting off to sleep yet. I was just in that funny middle ground between being awake and being asleep. And all of a sudden, from the next room, in a building that was completely locked down, in which there was no one else, I was the only person in the entire building, from the next room, my living room, I heard a woman sneeze. I'm alone in the apartment, so I'm lying there thinking, oh my god, oh my god. Either there's someone in the apartment, and then I'm in really big trouble, or there isn't someone in the apartment, and then I'm in really big trouble, <laughs> what do I do? So I took a, about 12 deep breaths, and I reached over, beside the bed for the only weapon that I had handy, which was a beer bottle, and, uh, and, and sort of, okay, okay, all the lights are out, unfortunately, except for this little light right by the bed, and, and I take one, two, three, and I run to the door, and I turn on the light as fast as I can with a beer bottle in the air, right? Nobody there. I do this in every single room of the apartment. There is nobody in the building, and... I, without a doubt, heard someone sneeze in that so next room, and not in a quiet way, like it was, you know, distant out on the street. This was right near me. Uh, later on in the same apartment, um, things moved around, and I came home one day where, one of the things about living alone, especially for your first time ever living alone, you lock the door when you leave, and you make damn sure you lock the door when you leave. And I, uh, I actually came home one night to find my door open, the lights on that I had not left on and the water running in my apartment uh, and repeatedly things like that that couldn't be explained. We called the police, they checked, nobody had broken in, there was no evidence of anything missing, but all the whole time I lived there strange things happened. So I don't know if it was a ghost or not, but either that or somebody was having a whole lot of fun scaring the hell out of me. Okay, so my ghost story is about uh, a haunted clock and actually the clock uh, belongs originally to my grandparents. That clock, when they got it, was already an antique, and ever since I was born, they've had it in their house on the mantelpiece. Mm -hmm. That clock, every once in a while, does this thing where all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the arms of the clock mm -hmm. will just go and go and go and go and go. And it was 
styled uh, after grandfather clocks, right? So it's a short one, but it chimes every time it hits an hour. So it would be chiming like ding, 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 and just going. That's what this clock does. There's no explanation for it that makes any sense in any way that could be explained by normal means. I was in Cedar, no, where was I? I was in Austin, Texas, in East Texas one night, and I rolled up to my friend's condo, and I look up from my seat, and I saw five ghosts under the tree. The reason that I knew that they were ghosts is because I looked down for a second, and I looked back up, and they had evaporated into thin air, like <laughs> thin air. And they, they were like, um, kind of antique-ish, like you could tell from looking at them that they weren't in their era. Antique. Paris, France, and I woke up one morning in my aunt's house that I was staying at, and I was kind of like scared because there was this white man, and he was pretty happy, and he was floating about my room, and I was really startled, and like when I came to realize that it was a ghost, I went to go ask my aunt okay. who it was, and she called her granddaughter, who came over immediately, and remember, this is the first time I had ever met my cousin, eh, because I live in Canada, and she lives in France. <laughs> Okay. And she started going through albums of photos with me, and she goes, is it this man? And I go, yeah, that was him. And she goes, that's my father. Oh my God. And I was like, oh my God. And she just started bawling her eyes out uncontrollably. He had died in a car accident many, many, many years ago. She was a young girl.